Good evening, everybody, and welcome to my weekly legal series where I attempt to discuss important topics pertaining to automobile accidents and how consumers can best prepare themselves for this eventuality and also attempt to answer your questions. My name is attorney Chris DeBerry, and if you like what you hear today, feel free to smash the like button, comment or share, and I take your comments and questions very seriously, and I appreciate your criticism. Uh, my mother is watching. Hey, Mom, thank you for tuning in. She's always reliable that way. Thank you. Well, today we're going to talk about property damage. And what I mean by that is the damage that's done to your vehicle or personal property as a result of an accident, usually an automobile accident. So your car has been involved or damaged in a crash. And the extent of the damage is going to be assessed by the at-fault party's insurance carrier. So the insurance carrier for the driver who causes the accident is more than likely going to be responsible to repair or replace your vehicle in case of an accident. And in Florida, as you know, because we've discussed this in past presentations, that an auto policy written in Florida must have at least $10,000 of property damage liability as part of the policy. That's statutory, that's mandatory. Um, you can contract for more, and I recommend that people do. Uh, you probably want to carry something more like twenty five, fifty thousand or more because vehicles tend to be expensive. And if you're involved in a multiple vehicle accident, then ten thousand dollars may not cut it. And remember, for that which you are not insured under a policy, you are self-insured and property damage claims are no different in that respect than bodily injury claims. Now, you'll chances are go through the other driver's policy. Uh, that way you don't have to incur the deductible under your own collision on your auto policy. But there may be times when you elect to go through your own carrier. For instance, if there is a challenge to liability, if the other side is not convinced right away that they need to take responsibility, they may need to investigate further, make contact with their insureds. Uh, sometimes it takes a little time for that to happen. Sometimes their insureds don't want to deal with it. They bury their heads in the sand or under a rock, and it makes it difficult for the other side to do the right thing. But uh, for the most part, we generally rely upon the other driver's insurance company to pay for our property damage. Of course, like I said, you can go through your own insurance company as well, and the process is very similar. However, you will have to incur a deductible. Now, it's not to say that you lose that deductible forever. What happens is your insurance company will then pursue the at-fault driver through their insurance company in what is called a subrogation action. A subrogation action is an action brought by an insurance company to recoup losses that they've paid out on your behalf when there is an at-fault third party that they can pursue. So that's something that may happen. Um, now, legally speaking, what an at-fault driver's insurance company and your own insurance company, if they're going to pay your property damage, owe you, and, and this is different than a bodily injury claim. Now, while a bodily injury claim and a property damage claim often, if not always, spring out of the same events, a bodily injury claim is separate from a property damage claim. Now, while in court, they'd have to be brought at the same time if they're being brought together or both being brought and, and, and not being one settled than the other, um, you settle a bodily injury claim uh, usually later then you would resolve a claim for property damage. Usually that gets done early on in the claim. Um, it's actually one of the few times I allow my clients and the at-fault insurance company's adjusters to communicate with one another um, rather than have me be the go-between just for the sake of, of simplicity and convenience. However, you know, the clients are not to discuss anything to do with their injuries with the property damage adjusters. Of course, they usually don't ask about those questions anyway, or at least out of courtesy, they don't. So, one of the things you don't want to do is when you settle a property damage claim, you want to make sure that any waiver that you sign only applies to the property damage and not to the bodily injury claim. One of the reasons it's handy to have an attorney present because we can review those releases and make sure that you're not taken advantage of and you're not at the mercy of some unscrupulous claims rep who wants to get the whole thing done. Um, sometimes you see this where, you know, the certain insurance company will, will call it insurance company P has its uh, claims rep pull up in an SUV uh, with the name of the insurance company uh, prominently displayed on the side of the SUV, and they decide they want to write you a check for a little bit of money to resolve your property damage and your entire claim, and that is just wrong, and you want to avoid that at all costs. But 
there's the property damage claim and the bodily injury claim. But legally speaking, in the property damage claim, the insurance company for the at-fault driver or your own insurance company, if they're going to engage in the repair, only owe you what it costs to repair the vehicle with the exception of depreciation claims because you can actually bring a legal action against an at-fault party or party not just for the damage to your vehicle but also the depreciation and its value. But in a situation where you're having the vehicle and the vehicle's not been a total loss, they only owe you the repair value of the vehicle. Uh, depreciation is something you'd have to work out or bring in a claim. Um, however, if the value of the damage to your vehicle exceeds the value of the vehicle itself or it exceeds the state's allowable cash value limit on a vehicle, then the vehicle is actually going to be a total loss. And um, the insurance company has no duty to repair your vehicle if it's a total loss. They don't have to replace your vehicle if it's a total loss. And um, they also don't have to pay off your loan. And that's a very, very interesting thing because a lot of people believe that if the insurance company for the other side is going to pay for the vehicle, then they're going to pay the loan off on the vehicle as well. And remember, that's not the case. They don't owe the finance company really anything. And um, one of the reasons is, is the insurance company, uh, you know, doesn't, it's not their fault that you have a balance left over on your car. Um, the insurance companies uh, do not pay your car off. So if you're in that situation, where your vehicle has been damaged or totaled, you need to continue to make payments on the car until the matter is settled. Um, but what they do owe you, though, in a replacement of a vehicle, if your vehicle is a total loss, it's total out. You've heard that expression, they totaled my vehicle. Well, that's what they mean. They mean that the cash value of the vehicle is less than the cost to repair it, or it's under state regulations, not a repairable vehicle. Um, they owe you the fair market value of your vehicle. So basically they take a vehicle that's similar to your vehicle and make it in model options, condition, mileage, and they would see what it would sell for in the open market uh, prior to the motor vehicle accident. And uh, now that's another thing too. If you have a loan or a balance or you're upside down on an auto loan, like I said, the insurance company doesn't pay the balance of your loan. Um, and they're not responsible for you being upside down in the vehicle. I mean, the insurance company didn't cause you to purchase a vehicle at the value that you purchased it at. Um, so they're, they're really not responsible for doing this. Uh, they may, however, be responsible uh, on behalf of the insureds for depreciation that the damage causes to your vehicle. So if you had a brand new vehicle that was worth, say, $40,000 when you drove it off the lot, is now worth maybe $25,000 because of the extent of damage, well, then there's an issue, and that's depreciation, and that can be addressed in a, in a depreciation claim. Um, now, if it doesn't really matter if you uh, had collision coverage under your own policy with your own insurance company, or if you use the at-fault person's uh, insurance company, um, you have to understand that they're going to pay only the replacement value of the vehicle or they're going to make uh, repairs. And if you feel for some reason that the uh, other at-fault driver's insurance company is not paying fair value for a total loss or is underestimating the amount necessary to repair your vehicle, then you can go through your own insurance company and have them do an estimate and see if you turn up uh, in better shape with, with your own insurance company doing it. It's, it's sort of a little bit of a joke among attorneys and people in the industry that we feel that the amount of, of, of a, a total loss is probably one of the only things the insurance companies value-wise we feel gets right. Now, we feel that they undervalue bodily injury claims all the time. However, property damage, you know, they're using sources like Kelly Blue Books and the uh, NADA's website. And, you know, they're, they're, they're probably pretty close in their estimation of the, of the value, of the replacement value, fair market value of a vehicle. So um, you can also request that the at-fault party's insurance company provide you with a rental car um, during a reasonable period of time that your vehicle is being uh, repaired. Uh, so they should reimburse you. And oftentimes they'll set it up for you too. You know, they may have a, an agreement with Enterprise Rental or Hertz Rental Car. So once you're ready to bring your car and to be repaired to the repair shop, they can make arrangements with a conveniently located shop uh, uh, or a rental car company, I should say, 
and the rental car would then be provided to you for however long. And they'll give you a, uh, a date that the rental car will be due back. However, oftentimes when shops are looking cars over, they may have given you or given the, uh, the at-fault insurance company a certain amount of time that they expect they'll take to repair the vehicle. However, that time may be exceeded by new things that they find, by parts not coming in on time and those things that can generally delay uh, a vehicle repair. Um, the last option, I mean, you may also, if your car is total, but you want to keep your car, you may have the option of obtaining what's called a salvage title and have that issued. In other words, you can repair the car and drive it, but because it's deemed a total loss, that's going to be on your title. Uh, and you will, uh, that's going to be, uh, you know, not valued as highly um, as if you would have had the car uh, replaced, you know, you're not going to get paid nearly as much uh, for the repair of the vehicle um, if it's a total vehicle. Uh, additionally, too, um, it has consequences as far as selling the vehicle is concerned and the fact that your title is going to be a salvage title and you don't have the freedom to uh, to sell that car as you might another car. Now, um, you may be thinking about having an attorney file a lawsuit. In fact, after discussing the matter with your attorney, you may decide that you're going to bring a property damage claim against the other driver, possibly for the value, if you feel it's being undervalued, if it's being uh, improperly uh, compensated for repair, or if you think that there is a uh, depreciation claim to be brought as well. So how long do you have to bring this action? Now, in the state of Florida, under Florida statute section 9511, um, any action founded in negligence, meaning a situation where some person's carelessness either injured you or caused damage to your property or both, a four-year filing deadline applies to any lawsuit making replacement of the uh, or, or, or uh, repair of the damaged vehicle um, or personal property. So if, uh, you know, much like a negligence case where you have four years to sue for bodily injury, you also have four years uh, when the negligence also causes property damage. Um, and uh, this also applies to uh, claims for depreciation of the vehicle's value as well. But while you can bring a lawsuit, more often than not, people go through insurance companies uh, to either have their vehicles repaired or declared a total loss. Now, some insurance companies, and this is important, some may require that you bring the vehicle or tow the vehicle to one of their shops, one of the shops on their lists, at least for the purpose of inspection and having an estimate done. However, you have the actual repair work done at the shop of your choosing. You can pick the shop that fixes the car. If you've complied, if you brought the car to their shop for an estimate and so forth, and they give you the estimate and you don't wanna have the car repaired at their shop, you can bring it to your own. And as my good friend, Greg Jerkowski from Primo Auto Collision in South Tampa likes to say, you choose the repair shop, not the insurance company, bump, and that's the law. And that's the law. Um, and, and please bear in mind, if there is a total loss and that vehicle is still owned by the bank, then to the extent to which the vehicle is not yet paid off, you need to make payments to the finance company until they resolve the loan with the bank or with the finance company or with the leasing company in the case it's a lease. So you, you still have that financial obligation. And it sounds unfair that somebody caused an accident. They've taken my car out of commission. I've had to, uh, my car has been totaled. The car needs to be repaired and so forth. Why should I continue to make car payments on this car? It wasn't my fault. Well, that's also not the fault of the, uh, other driver's insurance company, they don't have to reimburse you for your car payments. You have to make those payments until the matter is resolved. And a situation where a vehicle is totaled out will require the insurance company to stroke the check first to the finance company for any amount that is still owed on the vehicle. In fact, sometimes if you're upside down in the vehicle, the finance company's check uh, that they receive from the insurance company is not going to pay the car off. And then you're in a real situation. Now, this is one that's very, very much avoidable if you buy something called gap insurance from your dealer when you purchase the car. Gap insurance is a special kind of coverage that you purchase, which is intended to pay off what's left owed on a car in the event the car is a total loss. So 
that's very, very important because people often find themselves. And I just I received a phone call from a young lady the other day who purchased Gap or so she thought from the dealer. But unfortunately, the way in which the purchase took place apparently nullified the Gap coverage. So not only do you have to purchase Gap from the insurance company or from the uh, from the app, uh, from the dealer when you're purchasing your vehicle, but you have to make sure of the terms when it applies and for how much, because you want it to cover the full amount of the difference between the value of the vehicle and what you get, uh, what gets paid off to the insurance company or the, uh, paid off by the insurance company to the finance company. You don't want there to be an outstanding balance because you'll be on the hook for it. And then you'll wind up having to roll it into your next auto loan. And then you'll be upside down in that vehicle. It's very much avoidable. So that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about as far as the property damage is concerned. And remember that the property damage uh, claim has to be brought in four years. Remember, you don't want to settle a bodily injury claim and a property damage claim with an adjuster writing you a single check and handing you a release at the scene of the accident or until you've consulted with an attorney and had them review all the particulars. And it doesn't take that much effort, just but it really needs to be done. We're trained in reading these documents and understanding their legal meaning and the rights that you are giving up by entering into these agreements. So call an attorney if you have a question. Call me. The law office of Krista Barry. I do this all the time. Uh, remember also purchase gap insurance from your dealer at the time you purchase the vehicle. That way you can be sure that you won't be stuck holding the bag in the event that there is money, uh, that there's a gap between the amount of money uh, paid to the finance company and the amount of money or on the car if you're upside down in the vehicle. And also continue to make payments on your vehicle up to the point where the responsible party's insurance company settles the account with the finance company or the leasing company. That way you won't be in default on your lease and run into all kinds of credit and repossession problems and so forth. That's very easily avoidable. I know it sucks, excuse my French, but unfortunately you do have to continue to make payments on your vehicle until that matter is resolved. And remember, you get to choose where the repair work is done on the car, not the insurance company. They can make you go to their shop for an estimate and for um, uh, an inspection, but they can't make you fix a car there. Choose a shop that's good, choose one that's reputable. I recommend shops like Primo Auto Collision and Greg Jerkowski because he's been in business for 30 years and companies like his are familiar with the process. They've done this a lot. In fact, they will often deal directly with the insurance company to have payment directed their way so that a driver doesn't have to worry about it. You know, they will handle everything. And not only that, as new things are uncovered as far as damages in the car, in the car are concerned, because it's not always easy. In fact, the initial estimates done by the insurance company shops aren't always complete. Um, they don't really do the digging most of the time, at least in my experience, that a private shop might do. In fact, uh, Greg's shop, Prima Auto Collision, they're like Sherlock Holmes. They find everything wrong caused by the accident, and they will make the insurance companies aware of that. And in doing so, they're often able to get the rental car time extended uh, and make sure that the um, repair to the car is complete and, and, and that the consumer is not experiencing buyer's remorse uh, after having their car fixed somewhere that isn't reputable. But that's pretty much the primer. And that's, really, that's a lot of information, but it's still really just the nuts and bolts on property uh, damage. So in addition to all those things, uh, doing those things, if you've been involved in an accident and you've suffered injury and or property damage, Call the law offices of Krista Barry at 727-656-7852. Visit my website at CDB Injury Law and learn a little bit more about me. Uh, and also, um, you know, feel free to like this presentation. If you did, you know, smash the like button or just press the like button. Um, share, comment, uh, and I appreciate your feedback. And like I said, I sometimes base entire segments on feedback and questions that I get from the people that watch my presentation. But thank you all for tuning in. And I hope you have a wonderful evening and very happy and safe holidays. Thank you very much.